Well, greetings, saints. Welcome to Chaplain Peter One on YouTube. I'm also on uh, brighteon.com under Heavenly Glory. And my website is Eternal Values, values with an S, eternalvaluesministries.com. And today I'd like to share a word with you from the Lord concerning uh, the churches. The churches uh, need to go out and to witness. The people need to be taught how to witness for the Lord. We are in a very late time in history here uh, before the Lord comes back. And I know when he's coming back, by the way. He comes back after the tribulation, like uh, Matthew 29, 31 says. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so, you know, as I prayed about this, the Lord gave me this word, and now I'm uh, giving it to you. Why do you sit idle in your churches? Where is the fervor, fire, of my Holy Spirit? For the Spirit seeks to convict and save the lost. That would be John uh, 16. Is there not enough people destined for hell? What prevents you from being witnesses? Know ye not that the righteous will inherit the earth? To what purpose did I, the Lord, save you? Someone brought the good news, the gospel, to your ears. Seeds were planted, then I sent others to water so that your, your fate would grow. Where is the zeal for my righteousness, asked the Lord? Have you quenched the spirit? Have you put away my calling on your lives, on your lives to serve the Lord? Is mammon, is money better? The riches of this world, no matter how much you accumulate, cannot give peace. Some of the richest people in the world are the most miserable. And you can read that in 1 Timothy chapter 6. It says that, um, that many have pierced, them th pierced themselves through with sorrows, many sorrows, because they went after the riches of this world instead of serving God. For only I, the Lord, give purpose, direction, understanding to a man's or a woman's life. So now I shake the tree to see what will fall out of it. I purge, crop the branches so it will produce more fruit. I sent persecution, hatred of the godless men to uh, pursue you, to prune you. The fires of trials, the trials by fire, give you an expected end. Daniel chapter 11. Purification by fire is to give you a place in my kingdom not to be ashamed of. All who put their trust in the Lord will experience this. Them that endure will reign with the Lord. We, we must endure, saints. We've got to endure. This is over and over in the scriptures. There will be Noah, the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the prophets of old, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and apostles, and all the faithful saints to fellowship with for eternity. I, the Lord, am there. You will behold my face and be as I am in the resurrection. Praise the Lord. That's First John chapter 3. You will live and reign in my Father's house forever and ever without end. This is the promise of all who give their lives to serve the King and the Savior of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. The fields are ready to harvest. Jesus looked across a field with his disciples, with his apostles, 
And he says, look, the field is white, the wheat, the, the wheat is white, it's ready to harvest. And he says, pray, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he sends out more laborers. We are in need of laborers in the field, saints. Um, you know, the angels, in the end, they are the reapers. So you and me today are also the reapers. We've entered into their labor in the preaching of the cross, the preaching of the gospel, to save, sanctify a holy people, a holy bride for my son. Will you give up the things of this world and come and serve the king of kings? You will not re regret giving your lives to the Lord. He will provide all your needs, physical and spiritual. His strength is joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So let us go forth and put our hand to the plow, not looking back. This is eternal work with eternal wages. And the Lord said, preach, teach, send it out to the churches, the Lord of the harvest, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, praise his holy name and thank you for your word, Lord. Excuse me a moment. And so, let me ask you, has the Lord put a calling on your life? You know the Lord has called you into the ministry. You know the Lord has called you uh, to serve him in some way. But instead, you decide to go into uh, business. You decide to make money. Surely, we need, we need money to do the Lord's work. Um, let me tell you something. I, um, I've worked all my life. And, um, well, most of it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I've done the Lord's work, especially in the latter half of my life. And um, the, Lord's, the Lord's always uh, provided. There were hard times. And there were times of more prosperity. But I'll tell you something. You don't learn the things you need to learn to serve the Lord and to be purified and to be made holy by uh, easy things, smooth things. It, it just doesn't work. In fact, the scripture tells us that in the last days, men are going to heap themselves teachers. They want their ears itched. They want to hear smooth, easy things. Well, that's not uh, for us who trust the Lord Jesus Christ. You realize that if they hated him, they, he will hate you. If they persecuted him, they will persecute you. That is, if you will live for him. Okay, so, you know, Lord, Lord uh, let me go through this. I want to read it once and now go through it a little bit. Why do you sit idle in your churches? Where is the the fire, the fervor of the Holy Spirit. You know, when I look at uh, people in the past that uh, preached the gospel, what was that, uh, Whitfield? He, he preached to um, tens of thousands of people in the, uh, what was it, 1600s, 1700s, around that time in, uh, in England and in, in the United States. And um, he preached himself pretty much to death. But he's got a good reward. Amen. Others also, like uh, the Wesleys, uh, John and Charles uh, Wesley, uh, many, many others. Uh, you look at Luther and, and, and the Reformation and, and others in there. Um, people burnt at the stake for uh, preaching the gospel, for believing salvation is by grace through faith. And not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works as any man should boast. People burnt at the stake for being faithful and not uh, and not saying Caesar, the Roman Caesar is God or not bowing down to the popes and not believing some of their teachings which are which are not biblical at all. Amen. Uh, and they would they would torture you for this. 
Of course, the tortures would be meant to bring you to their to their Christ, to their salvation. <laughs> but um, um, where where is the fire that men endured such things? And now um, I don't know. I've been saved like. 48 years, almost half a century, and um, gone to church. But where is uh, where's the evangelism? You have a few, you know, missionaries get sent out. But what about the saints? What about you sitting there in the church? Do you witness? Has your uh, church taught you how to witness? Um. This is woefully lacking. And that, that the fire, the Holy Spirit, God's going to kindle it again. God's going to kindle it again. I mean, people are going to hell. And what are we doing in the churches? You hearing a nice sermon? Uh, we need to get out on, out on the street, saints. He says, where is the zeal for my righteousness? Have you quenched the spirit? Have you quenched the spirit? Are, are you looking to make money instead of serve God, especially if there's a call in your life, people? You need you need to, to crucify the flesh and go out and, and serve God because, you know, um, let, me, let me read to you some scripture. Let me find my Bible here. And let me read to you to, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 what the Lord has to say about, about riches. The Apostle Paul here writes it in 1 Timothy chapter 6. He says here in verse 7. Let's start earlier than verse 7. He says in verse 3, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words um, of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but dotting about questions and strifes of words, Wherefore cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, gain is God prosperity, gain is godliness, from such withdraw yourself, get away from them. But godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out and having food and raiment clothing let us be con let us there would be content but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all evil, while which some covet it after were greedy after, they have erred from the faith and pierced, like with a knife, pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, run from these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickened all things, and before Jesus Christ, who Pontius Pilate, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only had immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach, 
unto whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Now listen to what he says here in verse, verse 17. He's not against you if you got money. Okay, but if you're a believer and you got money, just listen to this. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, which giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. In other words, share your money, especially with them that labor in the word of God and them that will go out and preach the gospel. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold of eternal life. Praise the Lord. And so the Lord is, is very serious about this, that we need to, uh, we need to make our, our calling sure. And if you've been called into the ministry and, and, it, and if you don't have, you know, if you're not an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, a teacher, you know, or something, you know, something like that. Um, yet you need to know how to witness. And um, you see street preachers on the street. And they get abused when they go out there to preach, but they do it because they're constrained by the love of God to go out there and to uh, see souls get saved. We can't save nobody, but we got to preach the word. Otherwise, nobody gets saved. Amen. And so it's, it's really important. And the, and the Lord, you know what the Lord will do? It says he'll, he'll shake the tree. He's going to see what falls out of it. What are you holding on to? The Lord will shake you up. He, will, he shook me up good. Let me tell you, um, this actually happened to me. Um, this must have been, I don't know, maybe 25, 30 years ago. I'm, um, I'm in Chicago. I'm in Horner Park. It's right there by the Chicago River on Montrose. Just go over the bridge. And, um, it was, a uh, nighttime. And I, I went over there. I sat down on a park bench by the tennis courts. And I started praying and just being alone with the Lord I didn't see nobody else around. And as I'm talking to the Lord and, pr and praying, I hear this chopping noise. It was a distinct noise, like when you take a, a tree and you use an ax or you cut lumber with an ax, okay? And it's just chopping and chopping. Now, it's dark out. It's 10 o'clock at night, and it's behind me up on this hill in this park. And so I just keep praying, and I remember saying this to the Lord. I think this is the first time I, I really asked for the Lord to speak to me, to because I've been I've been praying and speaking. I says, Lord, I've been here praying. Lord, you got anything you want to say to me? And the moment I said that, behind me, this large tree, this large branch, starts cracking, cracking, cracking until. It fell to the ground. Well, I got up and I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to run up there and see if somebody was up there because there was no lights, no nothing. It's dark. Somebody was chopping this, this large branch off at that height. They're going to fall and get hurt. So I, I start going up there. Here comes a couple. They were somewhere uh, walking. Uh, and I asked them, I said, did you hear that chopping noise? Because they heard, they, they also wanted to go up on the hill to see what's going on. He said, yes, we heard it. But we went up there and nobody's there in this big branch. I mean, a real big branch of the tree was a large tree is laying on the ground. And so I remember going home that night and thinking about this. And I got up in the morning and the Lord just laid, laid it in, put it, put it in my mind about being purged, being pruned. You know, you take a tree and you, you prune it. You take a tree and you crop it and it grows more. You take, you, you prune a tree, you, uh, it grows better fruit. It grows more. 
Well, that's what God does with us. He prunes us so that we will produce more fruit. We've been saved to produce the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? Against such, there's no law that can judge you if you live like that, if you walk if you walk in the character and the love of God. So that, that actually happened, and many other things also happened. But the Lord will do that to us, and he, um, he does this to purify us. He's preparing us for heaven. Do you understand that? That's what this is. This is preparation for eternity. Preparation to be with the Lord. Preparation, if you're faithful, especially if you get martyred and you die for him, you will reign with him. Revelation 20, verse 4. So this is, this is what this is about. Let, let me read you another scripture here in Daniel uh, chapter 11. Daniel 11. He talks about many people are, are going to be purified here. He is here with, uh, about the, speaking about the time of the Antichrist. And then he says in verse 32, Daniel 11, 11, 32, And such as do wickedly against the covenant, shall he corrupt with flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Lord, raise them up. Raise them up, Lord. Yet they shall fall by the sword, by the flame, being burnt alive by the flame, by captivity, imprisonment, by spoil, many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be helped with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. I hate that. You ever have someone come up to you and they just flatter you? They want something from you, you know? Verse 35, and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them, to test them, to purge, to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. Amen. So God has raised up these people throughout history, and now he's going to raise up more of these people. And they're going to die by the sword, by the flame, by imprisonment, all kinds of ways. Maybe, uh, maybe FEMA camps, you know, we don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see what happens here. But it's coming, saints. It's all coming. And we need to prepare ourselves for this. We need to be uh, right with God. We need to get rid of sin out of our lives. And, and to crucify the flesh and to move on forward. We've got a great future, but you got to endure to the end. And all the saints in the past who were faithful and endured to the end are going to be there. And it's going to be such a great fellowship, and especially to see our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. Praise your holy name, Lord. So the fields are ready, saints. What are you going to do? The harvest is ready. We got to go out there. We got to go out there and preach the gospel. Preach the cross. What will you do? Will you, will you obey the Lord? Will you, will you go forward? Some of you are listening right now. Some of, them, some of you have thought about this. You've got this calling on your life. God is after you and you're resisting. Put it away and go for it. I resist it also. Uh, the best thing that can happen to you is surrender to the Lord and go for it. Whenever I go out on the streets to preach, um, it's always a blessing. Always a blessing. Even when I didn't feel like it. See, that's what we got to do, saints. We got to do things because we can't go by feelings. We got to walk by faith, not by feelings and emotions and by what we see around us, our sight. We got to go by, by the word of the Lord. Amen. And so God God will provide everything for you. I remember I just 
got out of the Air Force. I got a job with an insurance company. At night, I would sell insurance in Chicago, auto insurance. And um, during the day, I'd go out in the street and I'd pass out by traffic court. <laughs> uh, you know, people get arrested. People need help. They need the judge is going to tell them to go get insurance. So what a good, what a better place than to go out in front by by traffic court as people walk by and hand them the advertisement of the company, and um, and they would give me so much money for bringing people in and you know. And things like that. I had this one guy from, I think he was from India. He gives me a Bible track and he starts telling me the gospel. I told him, oh, I remember now. I told him, yeah, I've been saved for about a year. And he says, well, what are you doing passing out these insurance leaflets? You need to be passing out these uh, Bible tracks and bringing people to the Lord. He said, the Lord will provide for you. He said, how many times a day do you need? Need to eat. The Lord will give you, get you at least a sandwich a day. You're not going to starve to death. So we go, go to work for the Lord. <laughs> I should have listened to him right there and there. And I did, I did, I did do the work of the Lord, but I could have done um, more. I mean, complete surrender and, and just go, man. <laughs> just go for the Lord. That's, that's the thing to do, man. If you're young right now, you know, you're a teenager, you're in, you're in your twenties, um, and you're wondering about a career and everything. Hey, all hell's about to break loose into this world, okay? Uh, careers are nice and all that. It's nice to make money, but this is more important. The word of God is more important. If you know the Lord, pray and see what the Lord would have you do, okay? All right, saints, I love you. The Lord loves you. God bless you. And we'll speak more on this later.